Hello, hello everybody, it's uh, Ed here at Acubase in the IRC. Uh, just thought I'd do a video about this. It's a uh, new phone, well I've had it uh, a couple of months now and so I thought I'd do kind of a review video I guess. Uh, so, as you may or may not know, uh, Yola, the people who make the Sailfish OS, recently-ish came out with a build of Sailfish, Sailfish OS for the Sony Xperia X, which is this. Uh, it's actually, they're now kind of touting it as the best phone for running Sailfish on, uh, which is great. Uh, so this thing has way better specs than any of the Yola devices. Uh, I don't think it's got as good specs as some of the community build phones that Sailfish runs on, but it's the best one that Yola kind of officially support. Uh, so it's got a hex car processor in it, uh, so it's got loads of uh, horsepower behind it. Uh, it's got a 23 megapixel camera on the back and a 13 kind of there for doing selfies with, if you're into that. Uh, it's got a an, an really, really, really nice uh, IPS 1080p screen, 5-inch. Uh, uh, now, what I noticed when I got this phone... Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to bother anyone else. It doesn't really bother me, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind, I suppose. Uh, the screen's kind of quite long and skinny. It's, I mean, you know, I mean, if you compare it to a Nexus 4, which is the phone I've pretty much been running since before I got this one, uh, I suppose it's about the same, actually. But I don't know, just feels really long and skinny to me. But, yeah, doesn't really bother me anyway. So, um, yeah, I've been pretty happy with this one. Uh, I was originally going to do a video on installing Sailfish OS on it, uh, using the kind of official YOLA instructions, uh, but to be honest with you, I kind of don't really see the point, because it took me about five minutes, it's literally no work at all to get it done. Uh, they provide a bash script, and you run the bash script, and wait five minutes, and you reboot, and you're in Sailfish OS, so really not a lot to it. Uh, the only slightly annoying part was actually unlocking the bootloader because uh, uh, Sony, um, you would dis it's not difficult, but you have to kind of go through a couple of things with Sony. You have to get kind of a developer key off them, go through a couple of websites to get like You get emailed a key and then you run fast boot um, OEM unlock with the key kind of in it. So... Yeah, that took a little bit of time, but it's not difficult, you just follow a couple of instructions on the website, so I don't really see the point in doing a video on that, because it's just not a lot to it at all. And like I said, you just download the um, you download the actual Sony drivers and firmware and all that good stuff, then you download the Sailfish OS actual image from Viola. Uh, it comes in like a zip file, you undo the zip file, <clears throat> and inside the zip file is the image itself, plus the bash script. So you stick all your Sony drivers into the file, uh, you run the bash script, and it does it all for you. It's, I mean, you know, <laughs> if, if you can't manage that, then this phone's probably not for you, to be honest with you. Uh, if you've ever installed a custom Android ROM, uh, you pretty much already know what you're doing, so just stick with that, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, uh, here it is. So I'll just uh, unlock the screen. Uh, it's got, a, for some reason, the actual on kind of unlock button is on the side here. It has got a fingerprint sensor in it and I tested it just briefly running Android and it works fine, you know, you just kind of do that with your finger and it unlocks the screen. Uh, sadly it doesn't work on Sailfish OS as of yet. Uh, I guess they just haven't got the actual software side of that all worked out yet. So Sailfish OS, if you've never seen it before, oops, Sailfish OS, if you've never seen it before, um, it's actually a continuation of the old uh, kind of Nokia operating systems like Mimo and Mego and all of those. I've actually got a Mimo phone in here somewhere. I should probably get it out to show you while I'm doing this. Um, but it's a continuation of that same software. Uh, it's actually the old Nokia engineers who are now working for Yola doing this stuff. Uh, so it's quite, if you've ever seen or used one of them phones, the interface is pretty much the same sort of thing. you got like an app grid here, which is like you open applications. Uh, as you can see, I've got four applications open there, and, and they kind of display kind of kind of small covers about the app, which is real quite cool actually. Like this one in my, in my top right is like the notes app. 
Uh, and as you can see, when it's kind of in that cover mode, it's just displaying a couple of, you know, a couple of grief notes. This one here at the bottom left is your music player. And so it's just displaying uh, what music I'm not listening to, but what I'm pretending to listen to for the video. Uh, so you can see Ray Malmsteen's uh, lovely face there. Uh, this one at the bottom right is just the camera roll, you know, photo gallery app, and it's just kind of displaying a kind of <laughs> spread of all the photos. And there's my IRC app, as you can see it's gone red there because someone's poking me in LDC. Uh, so that's like the home screen. Uh, and essentially, if you just kind of push the whole thing to the right, you get this. They call it event view. Uh, it displays your notifications at the top, as you can see. That one's the one from the IRC channel, just saying that someone's notified me. Uh, then it's actually displaying tweets. If you look at their tweets, it's got, um, you know, all the people I follow on Twitter, essentially. And you can just kind of run through it. Uh, just on a little view there. Uh, it used to display Facebook feed as well. Uh, but whatever reason, Facebook have killed whatever API y'all were using to get that in there, so that doesn't actually work anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, it was pretty handy, actually, so I'm pretty sad to see that go. Um, it's got a little weather widget doohickey here, and if you tap it, then it tells you a bit more info. Um, if you pull that whole thing down, then it's got kind of, you know, quick settings, like your Wi-Fi setting, airplane mode, uh, 3G, Bluetooth. Uh, I don't know what this blinking light at the top here is by the way I can't see that from where I'm sat but it's showing up on the camera as I've just noticed uh, but yeah that's um, and then if you just push from the bottom then there's all you open up, well not you open up there's your actual app drawer and if you ever want to get back to the screen from an actual open app you just kind of pull like that or like that and there you go, if you want to go from the other screen you pull from the left uh, that's kind of what differentiates Sailfish OS from other mobile platforms, really. There isn't actually any buttons. There's no buttons like you get at the bottom of Android or iOS. No kind of... And when you open up an app, there's no like back buttons or anything like that. It just, just displays whatever the app is. And you basically navigate the whole thing by just pulling it like that, you see. You just kind of pull the whole app across. And that's pretty much it. I uh, suppose I could probably display that on like the music app as well. Like, there's my playlist. If I just pull to the left, then it shows all these other things. And some apps, not all of them, but some of them have like a little pulley draw at the top, where if you just drag the whole app down like that, which is surprisingly difficult to do when you're looking through a camera to do it. It displays a couple of little other buttons, you know, like search and stuff like that. It depends on the app, obviously, what that is. So, um,. Yeah, it's it's different to navigate. I I get along with it really well actually. I find it's really, really, really intuitive to use. And it's very good one handed as well. I know that sounds really weird. Um but, you know, you can use this OS completely in one hand, you know. And even on a screen which is like this one, the fairly long five inch screen, you don't really need to be you know, wrestling your thumb across it and getting your other hand in to do all of the stuff. Unless you're like, you know, you're typing with your other hand or something, but even then, you don't really need to do that either because the keyboard's just, you know, you can just type as normal on a keyboard, really. Uh, we just wanna, and, and there is actually like one of these slidey keyboards, like you get on Android, like, you know, I think swiping is what they call it, isn't it? So you can do, you know, typing words, stuff like that, you know? So, yeah, pretty cool. I really like the OS actually. Uh, I was running it on my Nexus 4. Um, been running it on my Nexus 4 for ages actually. Um, fortunately the community builds for the Nexus 4 have kind of dried up a bit. Uh, they've stopped updating them for whatever reason. I think like the main guy who was doing it uh, basically just gave up for whatever reason. You know, not not really going to rag, rag on him for that because, you know, it's his choice isn't it? Um, so you know, the Nexus 4 build is now a couple of versions out of date, whereas this is getting updates directly from YOLO themselves, uh, which is awesome because, you know, you're just always on the latest Sailfish OS and they do keep it updated pretty well as well. I mean, I've had like two software updates <laughs> since I installed this, uh, which is great when, I mean, I've only been running it a couple of months of that, so that's pretty good going. Um, I think the, um, what I really liked as well, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying this is the case with this device, but 
Yola do kind of have a track record for supporting their devices for a seriously long time. If you look at how old the original Yola phone is, the Yola 1, uh, that thing still gets the same software updates this does. So, you know, they're doing that really well actually. Which is why, which is why I'm quite happy to support them really. Uh, even even if they are potentially, you know, they have kind of, from what I've read anyway, caused some problems with the community in terms of like, you know, the tablet whole debacle and all that good stuff, which I'm not going to even try and get into because I don't know much about it. But despite all that, I'm quite happy to support them just because it does look like they're kind of in it for the long haul, I suppose. Uh, but, oh, and another really, really great thing about this OS, it's I should probably really have started with this, but um, the actual OS is uh, actually, it's completely, um, it's like a normal desktop Linux OS essentially, and it's got all your favourite bits of kit running underneath it, it's running like a Wayland compositor with Qt on top of it for the UI, uh, it's even got everyone's favourite system D in there. And it actually uses, weirdly enough, um, Zipper for package management, <laughs> which, uh, whatever, um, Zipper's great, I think. I uh, wouldn't really have chosen it for a mobile device, but it works, so who cares. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's like, it's just basically everything that you'd really want from a normal Linux system, really. It's got a little terminal app, it's not the best terminal app, I've got to say. Um, just runs like a busy box shell, but um, you do get access to absolutely everything through that app. So it's good. It's good. Really, really nice little system. And because it's running um, Qt and Wayland, as you're probably seeing, kind of just with me fiddling around with it on the camera, um, performance is really nice. Uh, I never get any real kind of stutters on the device at all, really. Uh, it all runs really, really, really well. And even, I mean... Just just as kind of a, a bit of a test a bit ago, uh, I, plo I loaded absolutely shed loads of apps on it uh, just to kind of, you know, just to see what had happened basically and with no slowdown whatsoever. Some of the apps started backgrounding themselves, but that's pretty much to get expected, isn't it? Uh, so, um, Sony say that this device will get two days of battery. Uh, I've not had that. So I don't know if that's a Sailfish OS thing or whether it's just because I'm using it a lot more than Sony expected to. Uh, but I'm still getting easily a day out of it. I'm, I can even still, you know, go to bed, wake up in the morning having forgotten to plug it back in and it'll still be alive. So it's near enough, I suppose. And I pretty much charge my phone every night anyway, so it's not really been a problem for me. Um, so uh, I think the next thing I need to cover really is a bit of a, I suppose some people might consider this a bit of an elephant in the room. Um, Yola are actually charging you for this OS, uh, which is, I'm, I'm doesn't bother me because as far as I care, I'm supporting Yola, and you do get those that kind of support from them as well. Uh, for it, the price that they've given out is forty nine euros and ninety or ninety nine. Which is like forty four pound or about fifty high fifties, fifty seven, fifty eight US dollars. Uh and that's and for that you get their kind of customer support. You get um uh, they they've said they'll commit to a year of software updates on this for that. But again if the Yolo is anything to go by, I imagine that'll continue for longer. Um you also get uh, that for that money, that's when you get the Android app compatibility layer, which Sailfish has. I'll show you a couple of examples of that real quickly. Uh, you know, it'll you just load the apps as normal, and if I just come straight up uh, to the live YouTube app, um, and you also get a uh, Microsoft Exchange support as well, which is pretty handy. Uh, I did have it on using my work um, email account. Uh, but for whatever reason, I don't know why the admins at work have decided to um, not let us use the Exchange server outside of their network or something. I can't even get it on my PC anymore, I don't know why. I can't even get it in a web browser anymore. So I think that's... So it's not Yola's fault that that doesn't work. That is my admins who have broken that at my workplace. Uh, so, whatever. Um, 
so I'm not using that anymore. But it was it worked really well when I did use it. All your emails just show up in the email app, just like any other email account would. Uh, and all of your kind of events and stuff like that just show up in the calendar app. So it's pretty much the same as if you just added a Google account and you just got all your Google email and your Google calendar and all that good stuff. Uh, they also give like some kind of proprietary kind of predictive text input, which you can only get if you pay for the money. Uh, I don't really know what to say about that. I mean, I don't really see why there isn't just a free software version that they could have used, but I guess that's just a thing that they're putting in there. So, you know, and like I said, you get to support YOLA, which, are a, which from what it seems, are a really good organisation to be uh, supporting right now because they, they are committing to supporting privacy and all that kind of stuff you know they're not kind of baking google into the device anytime soon <clears throat> so there's no none of that kind of rubbish in this phone uh, unless you've installed it like i have <laughs> so in the android app compatibility layer which you can just turn off you know there's a setting in the actual settings app to just turn android support completely off uh it's there you just turn it off when you don't want it on and none of the android apps will run so whatever um now the android apps are bought bit weird um by default can't use google apps on it at all you can't install like play services so you don't get play star you don't get the youtube app uh you're basically limited to certain android apps that yola put into their store which i think there's like three or something silly like that and they do put another app store in the Yola store which you can download which is, I think it's like a I think it's basically like an Aptoid front end and you can download Android apps through them but again if you download an app that depends on Google Play services uh, that you're just going to get nowhere with it uh, so I have actually done some tweaking with the Android layer to use uh, Micro G now if you don't know what Micro G is it is basically like a free software implementation of the Google Play services. Uh, and so uh, it took a lot of faff to get that running in the Android compatibility layer, but it runs, so I suppose fine. Uh, there's also this little app store here, I'll show you quick, which, you know, it's not really anything to do with Sailfish OS itself, which is the, um, it's called Yelp store, and you can find it in the F-Droid store. Um, and it's basically a front end for the Google Play Store. So you can install Google Play apps through it. That's how I got the YouTube app in it. And that's how I've got your Mattermost app in there as well. Don't really need the Mattermost app, but I figured I'd put it in anyway just as a quick test. And uh, pretty much every app that I've tried, I mean, I've not tried many of them to be honest with you, but they all seem to work. All your Google apps work, YouTube works. Uh, I tried Google Maps briefly, that works. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's slightly laggy, um, a bit more laggy than like, um, you know, an actual native Sailfish OS app, but you know, it's not really that noticeable. And if you really need your Android, if you really need some certain Android app, you know, there's always these people who say, you know, oh, I can't switch me away from Android because of this one app that I need for work. Uh, it's probably going to work. Uh, you know, if you want me to test a few, just let me know and I'll run a few in, the, in on the device if you want. Um, the Android compatibility layer uh, officially is... Um, I can't remember how they word it exactly, but essentially it's it's a, any Apple run on it that would run on Android 4.4, which by these today's standards is a really old version of Android. But I've not come across many apps that don't support 4.4. Uh, for the camera that I'm using to record this, uh, um, there is an Android app for that, which only runs on Android 5.1 and higher. Uh, so that didn't work. Uh, as I said before, Mattermost, I'm having to use the Mattermost Classic app because the more modern version of Mattermost, for some reason, doesn't work on this older quote unquote android version uh so you know there's a there's a few but I'm, I'm not a big android user anyway so there's probably a lot more that i, that I wouldn't really be able to cover because i don't really exist um os itself i'm gonna go back to that a little bit uh 
being kind of an open it's not completely open source but there's very 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 heavy elements of open source free software all up in this OS um, and so there's quite a big community around it of people hacking on it tinkering things and so there is this other app store here like you've got your official YOLO app store and then you've got this other one here which is like there's two front ends for it there's either Starman or one called like Warehouse this Starman's a bit newer and it runs a bit better for me and this is um, basically it's like you know a community built app store rather than an official YOLO one um, and weirdly um, on the back end of this it's running I believe uh, the same software that like software.opensuse.org runs and so when you want to install an app uh, say I'll just grab this one I don't even know anything what it is but whatever uh, you first add the custom repository and then install the app from that repository same way you do if you're running software on OpenSUSE like I said from software.suse.org um, so yeah uh, that's pretty cool and oh really wanted to show you something here as well in the store in this kind of unofficial app store there's this category in here called patches and now these kind of difficult to explain I, i'd probably say the analogous to gnome and its extensions uh, they mostly change small things about the user interface of the device uh, of the operating system sorry uh, most of them aren't massive changes, but small little subtle things like like the silly one that I've got. This little lap drawer at the bottom, by default, has like a little silver lip kind of stuck to the end of it. And I've just installed a patch to remove that because I think it looks silly. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty cool. And there's absolutely millions of them as well. Look at all them. And they all just do small little tweaks. So you know, you've got loads of loads of customizability. In the user interface by default if you're just kind of doing configuring customizing stuff through the actual settings panel there's not a whole lot to it but if you get into them patches and all that good stuff you do find quite a lot of goodies in there uh, as far as kind of customizing the actual look and feel of the whole thing same official OS has these you just drag so you call them like ambiances uh, I'm using this flow one which is just the default one and you can see it's all kind of nice and blue and purple and that um, that actually comes with like its own kind of sound theme and it comes with all its own kind of stuff like that uh, so if I just uh, if you literally just find another one like you know, Salamander uh, it all changes and it goes red and again it kind of comes with its a different sound theme as well so it kind of completely changes the look and feel of the device just with those and you can pretty much customize them however you want. Like I use this one quite a lot, which is just a fairly dull, boring grey one, uh, which is the silent profile. So it's now the phone's now just completely silent. Uh, so yeah, pretty pretty handy little thing that it's not it's not like a game changer, obviously, but it's kind of nice how everything all changes just from that one little thing. Uh, on the older Yola device, that's what the other half clip on fingers used to do uh, like for example we did like an angry birds one and if you plug the angry birds one in then everything would go angry birds themed and all the sounds would be angry birds -y. all that good stuff so yeah uh yeah pretty cool pretty cool a uh, couple of problems i've had with it um the actual os os has vpn support kind of built into it um doesn't work at all uh, I've, I added um, a VPN to it. I use um, what they call PIA. I added that into it and nothing happened. Um, so there is actually a third party app in the um, Starman Star, which is just like a normal app for doing VPN, and that did the trick. So if that's important to you, that's probably what you need to do. Um, there's quite a few different accounts you can add to the kind of thing as well. If you go into the settings and show you. Uh, accounts in there. So as you can see I've got my Facebook, Google, Yola and Twitter account just kind of added to it. 
Uh, you need to add your Yellow account to it because that's what gives you access to, as I said, kind of Yellow's proprietary stuff like the Alien Dalvik for running Android apps and all that good stuff. Uh, so these are all the kind of accounts that you can add to it by default. You've got like Dropbox, OneDrive, Caldav, uh, just generic email. Uh, again, there's a few different kind of plugins you can download for that, like there's Next and Own Cloud ones. There's things for like, um, you know, these decentralized social networks like Mastodon and all those fun things. Uh, so, you know, you're not just limited to those. Um, I think I'm trying to think what else I need to cover on this, really. Uh, so, a couple of people do kind of argue that Sailfish OS isn't completely open source, which from what I can see is true. Um, the actual, the certain parts of the actual top layer user interface, like the Wayland compositor and all that good stuff, that they just haven't open sourced. Uh, so, again, if that's kind of important to you, then probably not really what you should be going for. There is project for installing Glacier on it, which is a, another um, user interface, but I tried it and it was just it was so kind of early and it didn't really work for me, so I'm just using the default one for now and it's fine, I suppose. Um, like I said, a couple of different things like the Android app compatibility layer, the MF Exchange support, they're all proprietary licensed blobs, which is why you pay the money for it. Um, I think if you want to compare it to Android, uh, I vastly prefer it to Android. I find the performance is miles better. I think the user interface is far more intuitive to use. Uh, and I, now the problem I've, that everyone's going to have with it if they're used to using Android is the app selection, because you know Android's you know <laughs> got like ninety percent of all the mobile apps in its store, hasn't it? So. App selection isn't brilliant, but I've not really come across anything in the apps, not in the app store that I needed. Like, I've got an IRC app. There is only one IRC app, so you either use this one or you don't IRC, essentially. Um, so if that's important to you, again, probably not going to get along too well with this. If you're just going to be buying this and running a load of Android apps on top of it, then probably what's the point you might as well just use android and you know actually get full kind of um, integration with the android apps because while they can do things like display notifications and they can do certain kind of things from within that compatibility layer it is a compatibility layer and it is a contained compatibility layer, layer as well so certain things the apps won't be able to do uh, as far as I know, they can all kind of access the hardware, like you download the camera app. Um, I think they work, I've not really tried it, but supposedly they do. I used the YouTube app um, to display like a 360 degree 3D video, you know, with like a Google Cardboard headset, and that worked fine. So I guess it's got access to all those kind of sensors in there. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, really, isn't it? Uh, I mean, if there's anything you want to see, just let me know. and. I'll see if I can kind of add a bit more to this. Um, but I suppose my kind of takeaway from this is I'm really, really happy with this device. But I'm not real. I've never really been into Android anyway. And so it's not, you know, the fact that I'm losing out on that massive ecosystem of Android doesn't bother me because I was never in it to begin with. Uh, so I think if you like me and if you're really really interested in running a phone that is completely de is that a word um, and more or less open source and a far closer to true Linux quote than Android then this is probably going to be for you if you like into tinkering with weird little things in a command line, you can do it all in this. Uh, there's loads of weird, weird little command line apps available. You know, it's got you know your SSH just runs in the terminal, just like a normal SSH session. Um, but I'd say it is far more consumer friendly than some of the other um, alternative Linuxy mobile operating systems. It's a lot 
Microsoft far better than Ubuntu Touch. The performance is miles ahead of Ubuntu Touch and the App Store is far more fleshed out, both the Yola one and the unofficial one. Miles more fleshed out than the Ubuntu Touch App Store, which when I tried it on the Nexus 4 um, was like web apps and that's pretty much it. I've not even seen a single web app on this. I don't even know if it's about them. Uh, so yeah, good. Really, really like it. And on this on this particular device it runs like absolute silk and I mean it ran really good on the Nexus 4 as well and I don't have it turned on at the moment but I ran Sailfish OS on this for quite a while as well uh, it runs really good on the Nexus 4 as well but it's just a shame that they've just stopped supporting it I suppose uh, so yeah there you go um, the brand the brand in this as like they're calling it Sailfish X because it's like Sailfish OS running on the next period X um, so that's, I guess that's what they're calling it. Um, I'm really happy with the experience overall and I do run it as a daily driver and I don't really have any trouble with that. Uh, oh, here's a major one for me now. When I first started using Sailfish OS on my Nexus, um, I did find that there were loads of kind of plugins for the actual messages app. You know, because the messages app basically uses telepathy on the back end, uh, which meant you could get plugins for it, which were just like, uh, you know, the Facebook Messenger plugin, um, Google Talk plugin, all that good stuff. And they all just sat there in the messaging app, just like normal text messages. It was brilliant. Um, but th none of those seem to work anymore. Uh, probably because Facebook have depreciated APIs and so have Google. Uh, so, you know, there are other apps, so there is like an actual Hangouts app, and there is a Slack app as well, so you can use those if you want. Uh, I actually prefer just to run the IRC app and attach it to my Fiddle B server and just do all my instant messaging through that. I don't even open the messages app anymore, except for doing text messages, and who does text messages anymore? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, if you know, if you've got any questions, I don't really know what people are actually interested in seeing about this besides what I've already showed. So please tell me and let me know if there is anything you want to see about this, about this device, or about Sailfish OS. I'll be happy to do a couple of follow-ups. I'm considering doing a video about how I got um, the Google app stuff to work in the Android compatibility because uh, it was quite a mess to do. It doesn't just work by default, you can't just install MicroG and expect it to work. Uh, quite a few little tweaks you've got doing that for, to make that to work. So if you want me to do a video on that, I'll be happy to. Um, otherwise, yeah, just, you know, if you want to come in IRC and ping me, uh, ask for a couple of, ask me questions about it, feel free, or if you want to just message on the YouTube comments, uh, again, feel free, and I'll see what I can do, alright? Alright, cheers guys. Have fun.